Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Avalanche, in my Avamancia Peninsula Let's Play Solo Survival Series. It's a lots of fun type thing. I am stood in front of the sheep. It has nothing to do with today's episode. I'm not really going to do anything more with this sheep farm until 114 comes out, and I will upgrade to 114, and then I can make an auto sheep shearer sheep farm thing. But right now, I'm just going to crack on with what I've got there because it's dead simple and does the job. Today, I'm going to try and see if I can't get myself a load of kelp by doing a kelp farm. Because a kelp farm is actually very useful for fuel. And I'm going to see if I can whack it into uh, like an auto smelter thing. And then the auto smelter thing becomes also an XP farm at the same time. Because the furnace whacks out a load of stuffs. And as a result, collects all the XP. And I'll have that. Thank you very much. I've got 66 XP at the minute. I need to get myself full on enchanting. Because my look at my armor. Look. I mean, it's very pretty and shiny and all diamondy and blue. But it's, it's a little bit rubbish. If I'm being really honest. And I have the end in my sights. I want to go and do some full on ending. And whether or not I do it with this armor... Or whether I whack on some iron armor, because theoretically, all I'm really wanting to do is uh, not get hit by anything. So therefore, protection isn't that important. I've not decided that yet. I actually don't know. But I'm going to um, get myself this kelp farm, because I do need the fuel. Because smelting is life, and all of that. So let's crack on. But before I do that, I'm going to go back over to the Hall of Heroes. We're not going to do uh, the mate's base right now we'll do that a little bit later on the episode we'll do one but i do want to go to the hall of heroes because after last week's episode when i built the hall of heroes something happened and i'm a little bit taken aback by it so i'm going to go over there right now i shall see you there so i am over in the uh mate's base hall of heroes area the other end of this blooming great big long bridge and before i go in i just wanted to say look and thank you to the about 20-ish people that have said over the last couple of months that I should waterlog the gutters that are at the sides of my roads because they'll look really, really nice. You know what? You are right. They do. And I did this the other day, and it looks brilliant, but I just noticed I've not done these ones, so I've just got to uh, do this. There and there. And this one. Oh, no, I did the wrong one. Do one in the middle, other man, so otherwise it isn't an uh, infinite water source you complete Wally. So there, and there we go. There we go. That's what I'm after. Look, it looks brilliant. It's actually really, really nice. I love it a really, really lot. But that's not why we come over here. I, I don't know if you saw the last episode, but if you saw the last episode, I built this Hall of Heroes. And the reason I built the Hall of Heroes was because there are a number of heroes emerging amongst you viewers and subscribers that are just... I mean, just I feel so incredibly humbled by you, frankly. It's just amazing. Um, I've built this for basically to show my appreciation of the people that have decided to become channel members and patrons of the channel because you you, you really do make a massive, massive difference to the channel. Your, your you know, few dollars that you give uh, actually means that I can keep the channel going and it, it's just awesome, beyond awesome. But I, I never knew... What would happen? I thought, oh, maybe you know, over time I might get the odd couple, three more. Well, I've had I've had what would be argued as a, a rather good response, shall we call it? So, I've um, had one additional channel member. So we're coming into the hall of this is the hall of members. Yeah, coming into the hall of members. Obviously, we've got all of the members that we had before, but we've also had brand new member Kathy Cleveland. Thank you so very very much. I'm very grateful for you joining the little army of channel members that have joined me. It's it's a real pleasure to have you on the team. If you do fancy becoming a channel member, there is a link in the description below, but it's not obligatory. I will abso 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 absolutely still make the videos. Also, I do want to change this because Sean sent me a message and he told me that he'd actually misspelled his name on YouTube now obviously I don't know what that speaks of Sean but he is without question a top top bloke and uh, Sean Pritchard which I thought sounded more right you are now correct 
in the Hall of Heroes. And then going over to the Hall of Patrons, you can see Hall of Patrons, we've had a couple of additions. We had before, we had Merv was there in there before. We have had joining the ranks of our cobblestone patrons. We've got Lisa Booth. Lisa, thank you so, so, so much. Really, really pleased. And um, Brandy Covington. The, you're just amazing, both of you. I'm so grateful for you both to, to join as a cobble patron. It is, you, even one dollar, I can't talk, I'm actually really quite overcome. Even one dollar makes a huge difference. I'm, I'm really taken aback. And then we've got our um, redstone patrons. And we obviously had Diamond before, who was there last time. Dave, Dave plays on the Quarrycraft server. And Dave, I tell you, Dave is a builder, like, amazing. He, he, he builds something. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I'm going to go on to Quarrycraft uh, probably in the next couple of weeks. I'm not going to spoil it. So, Dave, you've got about two weeks, mate, to make what you're going to make. I'm not going to spoil it, but I am going to showcase it, and people can come and see and marvel in the joy that is Dave Tong. Also, Richard Slater. Richard, thank you so much. Really good to have you on the team of patrons. Caroline Eppler. Caroline, I think that looks quite a lot like you, that statue. I don't know what you think. I think it probably does. Caroline, it is a pleasure, pleasure, pleasure to have you on the team. And Andrew Thompson. Andrew, thank you for your joining of the Redstone patrons army. Let's call you an army. You look like an army. Well, you either look like an army or you're about to, all five of you do the can-can. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm, I'm privileged uh, by your attention and I'm genuinely humbled by everybody that uh, responded uh, over the last few days. It's just amazing. Thank you so, 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 so much. And um, if anybody does, I say, want to join this l list of people, uh, the links are in the description below and you are wonderful. It's now night time. I think I should probably sleep because if I don't sleep, what's going to happen is I'm going to get my face eaten. So I'm going to have a kip and I'll meet you over at the other side again. I have some ideas in my head how this is going to work. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the ideas in my head are going to work, but we're gonna give it a try anyway. What I think I need is something that is um, six, six maybe? No, hang on, let me think. It needs to be one, two, so five physical gap in the, between the blocks, so seven across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven let me think this through hang on have i done this right have i done this right or have i just messed up i think uh, let me think we have got so if that's the row there that's the blank row they're the three active rows i think we're all right um yes i'm going to go with it it might not work, but I'm going to go with it. And then I'm going to make this as long as I want it to be, actually. Let me think. How long do I want it to be? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Why not 20? Why not? Let's make it 20. And then another 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then finish this row off the leg there. That's good. Right, so that's the size that we're going to use, but not every channel, not every kind of column of water is going to be kelpie. Now, you might have noticed this is on the land and not in the sea. There is a reason for that. It's because I don't want to have to compete with the water around me when it comes to playing around with redstone and bottling it. So I'm going to do it on the land because I think I can make it work anyway. So I'm just going to do another row here. So I've got two rows of glass to start with. I'm going to have to go and get some more glass, and I ain't got nearly enough glass because I've made it so blooming big. But that's all right. I can just keep and make the row. Out you go, chick chick. There we go, all the way along. I'm going to need at least another two or three stacks of glass, at least. Right, so if I assume that is the beginning, and I've just jumped off of that, and I probably didn't want to, then what I'm going to want to do now and this is also where I'm going to need to get I've fortunately got quite a lot of obsidian um, quite quite well obsidianized so here 
I need to have a whole a whole thing of obsidian along here. So that's 20 obsidian blocks. Now I could use furnaces for this, I know. But and then you've got to start to do like shift clicking and all that kind of malarkey. And it's just a pain, so I'm not going to do that. Um, in fact, this entire this entire ring needs to be obsidian, doesn't it? This is going to be almost my entire obsidian stash. Uh, well, stash that I've got in my hand anyway. So that's leaves me 12. Blooming neck, 12 obsidian left. So we are going to have. Let me think. I'm just thinking. So that is that. That's the row upon which it's going to go across. So actually, um, no. So this one needs to come. This one needs to come. Hang on. Yeah. So actually, this is the row that needs to be obsidian. There. Like that. And this one. Oh, no. Use the silk touch pickaxe. And that one. Yes. That's right, because that is, that right? Right, I'm gonna have to work this out, because in my edit works, but it's not looking quite right yet. I'll be back in a bit. Right, I think I've worked it out. So if you haven't guessed already, we're gonna be using a, hello chicken, there's no point in standing there. We're gonna be using a, a slime block fly machine to be able to harvest all the kelp. I've left my little bit gap there. So anywhere a slime block is going to be, you don't want to be in here, Chick. Seriously, seriously, you don't want to be in here. Um, anywhere a slime block is going to be, we need to have stuff that's not going to interact with slime blocks. So I've used obsidian, and again, you can use things like furnaces and movable blocks like that, absolutely. But I had quite a lot of obsidian, and I thought, you know what? I might as well use it. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to shove slime blocks across all of here to get me started there there and then I'm going to get a sticky piston there like that yes so now I need a couple of temporary blocks there and there I need to get rid of that Come to me, right? And then I also need to. I'm gonna have to do it by jumping up in here now. I also need to put another sticky piston there. That's cool. And another slime block. Where are you? Okay, so I've got a couple of extra slime blocks that I didn't need. That can come out. Right. So that is best part of the. Um, the sweeper system that is going to be. Why did you die? Why did that chicken die? I didn't kill him. Oh, a poor little man. Um, so what's going to happen? That sweeper is going to come back, and it's going to come across to here, and it's going to come across to here. Now the reason I have done it so low is because when you put a kelp in, it's got a lifespan. So the best it could be, I think, is about twenty or twenty-five, something like that. So depending on what the lifespan is of the kelp that's at the bottom, it's only got that many times it can physically grow up. So if you start chopping stuff up here, chances are you've got less growth ability and there's less chance to get up to the top. So if we're going to start cutting it really, really low, that means it starts to cut even when it's grown just one rather than like loads. And what happens is the kelp should flow up to the top and I've not worked out a way of doing that yet. Uh, the kelp should grow up to the top, and once it's got up to the top, it will flow across, and hopefully I'll have a nice collection system that won't break. That's my theory. So, however, we do have this big gap here. So my thoughts are, when you put water on top of water, it only kind of goes a little way along, doesn't it, before it kind of falls in on itself. So we shouldn't need to have uh, any block here. The slime block should be able to just go backwards and forwards along it if we don't put water everywhere. And I reckon 
the water from the top is going to potentially interact with it and we don't want it to. So I'm going to put a sign here. Because if you put a sign on it, I don't know if it's because there's a little bit of gap, but the slime block doesn't interact with the sign, which is nice. So I'm going to put signs all along all of these. I should have enough signs, I think. Along. Yes. Nearly. Done. Almost finished now. Oh, I put an A on that one. You know what? I don't want. I don't want it to be an A. I'm just. I, I'm just being a bit finickety. So let's get that, 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 and then I need me other signs. I had another six. Hopefully, yep, that should be enough. Two, and three. So I've got three signs extra. That's cool. And now, if I start to fill this with. Mm, yeah, if I start to fill this with water, so I had to think a minute then. If I start to fill this with water, um, well, make a infinite water source, you foolish man. If I start to fill this with water now, the classic infinite water source go back one, infinite water source go back one technique, then I'll get a full layer of water source blocks on the bottom, which is fine. I want this bottom one to be full. I need to block that up in a minute. That's not a problem. Like this. Nearly there. Like that. That's cool. And then, if I make some more water source blocks here, there, and there. Right, so that gives us a full layer all the way across. And we've just got that rowing out there, but it's all right because we're going to put an obsidian there in a minute. That's all fine. But then, if we, I'm just going to put some temporary blocks in here. One, two, three, and four temporary blocks. If I then take these and put a water source block there, you see it only goes along one. So if I put a water source block there and it goes along one. So if I then put a water source block there, it only goes along one, it doesn't go out the hole. So that theoretically, right, should mean if I do that there, and that there, and, and so on and so forth, I should, he reckons, I should get a layer of water that goes along but stops short. I'm hoping by the time we get to the end it's going to work. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, that would be an infinite water source block. Just put that there. So I should have one, two, three, which is what I wanted. I wanted three. So we have been successful. I now have to remember to get rid of these. Otherwise it won't work. Of course, I've not got any decent mining buffs. So I'm just going to have to do what it normally takes to cut out cobblestone whilst you've got your head in the water. So that's all good. Right, so we've got those. So that is that part of the water there. I then need to get this kind of full up to the top. So coming out, I can then put another, oh, another obsidian there. That gets rid of all that water there and we've still only got the water flowing in that way now obviously when that slime block sweeps across like that it's going to delete that top water block completely um, which isn't necessarily what we want so we need that water block to basically undelete itself but it doesn't have to undelete itself with a source block because the kelp when it grows into it will turn it into a source block anyway and all will be good with the world. So I just have to do a layer at the top of source blocks that will then kind of drop the water down and create a pillar of water all the way down. So I'll be back when I've done that, actually. I'll be back when I've had a sleep and I've done that. Otherwise, stuff will fly out of the sky and eat my face. So let's get that done. Right, I'm at the top. I made it a couple more high of glass and then covered it over with this cobble. This cobble is going to be temporary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bucket of water along just this edge 
uh, that will then flow and don't fall off whatever you do don't fall off that will flow and push uh, the water to the edge of this with it's not like a maximum flow it's only like how many is it it's like one two three four five so it's six rather than eight so it's still got a little bit of momentum before it hits the glass which means it should in theory push all of the um, all of the kelp that get floaty up should push all of the kelp to the end I'll put a bucket of water in there that bucket of water will flow that's seven that's another seven that bucket of water will flow to the end there and fall down in there so I'm just gonna cross my fingers toes legs anything I can think of and I'm gonna put water in so it's that one there, not that one, this one, there. So that makes that infinite source block. If we come there, and again, you know the drill. So let's fill that up, and don't fall in, but it's all right, I can get out. So where's the thing there? So I'm just gonna carry on doing this. Uh, I'm gonna fill up the, um, the trench and then I'm going to take my life into my own hands and I'm going to take out all of this cobble and when I take out all the cobble we should get a, a column of water, not infinite water but a column of water that will um, be sufficient for the kelp to be able to grow up into it also means that I can then access the tank without this cobblestone lid uh, because the cobblestone is obviously going to get in the way for me to be able to um, actually plant the kelp in the first place. So that should... Why is that? Oh, it's because I put the signs in the wrong place. Um, yeah, then that's not going to work. I'll put the signs in the wrong place. So what I'm also going to have to do, I'm going to have to go and get... Um, so that would go there. So I'm going to put a sign there. That's what I need to do, you foolish man, for goodness sake. So I'm also going to have to put the signs in the right place as well. So I shall do that. Uh, where's my bucket? I also want to put a bucket of water. One bucket of water at the end there as well, don't I? So let's get the bucket of water there. Hang on, whilst I've still got you, I'm just going to put the bucket of water along here. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to put a sign there so as I can easily access that I'm going to take that out I've not got an axe have I got an axe? Well, I've got an axe but anyway I'm not using it I'm going to put a bucket of water in there that should flow theoretically all the way down but not into the hole it should just go over the hole uh, except again I've done it again and I that's got to be can I even reach that no I can't so I'm gonna to have to be a little bit clever Use my and I'm going to, have to put a sign there, and that should, in theory, do what I want it to do. If I then block back up with the glass, right? Some fixing to do here, people. I'll be back when I've done it. So I have taken out all of that cobble and replace the signs and we have got now I think a working system it will be interesting to see if this actually works because I've sort of made this up as I've gone along but theoretically I can't think of a reason why it won't work just coming along here that all looks good right so I just want to make sure that we have indeed got water so yeah look so we've got water blocks all the way down they're not water source blocks but they are water blocks and we've got not water blocks here and the not water blocks here um, are the reason why it doesn't fall out and when this this is my theory <laughs> this is my theory when that sweeps across and comes across this way it will delete all of these water blocks along here that kind of this this row of water blocks here but then the water above it will come down and refill them 
That makes sense, right? I think that makes perfect and absolute sense. Okay, so I'm going to come back up here. I don't want to plant the kelp yet. And the reason I don't want to plant the kelp yet is because if the kelp grows up into not this block, it doesn't matter, but if the kelp grew up into these blocks here, it would turn those into source blocks. And that would stop the water flowing across, which would stop any floaty kelp being pushed across into the collection channel. And that would be bad. And I'd be a very cross avo. So I'm just going to come down and uh, get myself back down to the ground because I don't need to be up there anymore. Because it's glass, it isn't a spawnable block, so I don't have to light it up. It should all theoretically good, and if I have to go back up there, I will. But I also need to... I can hear a growling. Why can't I hear a growling? I also need to put a timer on this fella. In fact, what I will do first is I'm going to get this fella set up. Right, so we need temporary block there and there. Take out that one. Take out that one. Take that out, take that out. Oh, I took out the slime block by mistake. That's not a problem. Get that slime block back. Actually, I won't put that slime block back because it might make it easier for me to do. Get the observer pointing up into that one. Get an observer pointing up into that one. Got a slime block there. All right, so when I remove those blocks on top, it will start the machine off. So what I need to do is I need to put something on here that is going to cause the the machine to go basically backwards and forwards. And I think the best way of doing that is just come here. This is the bit that I've not really thought through. Um, I think the best way, if I put a block, I'm not sure which one it is. Um, it will be this one here. So not that one. If I put a block on there, no, cut it off with that. Good mistake, man. And I get a trap door and put the trap door on a block there. Right, no, I didn't think this one through again, did I? Right, so up there and up there. And then I put the trap door on. Uh, like that think man like that and then take that out if I then that would mean oh, I've done it on the wrong one oh that's just annoying right so put it on there and there just leave this here for now so as I can do it. If I put that on there like that, get rid of that one. I should have used my axe, I know. I should have used my axe, I know. For goodness sake. Right, so that goes there. I need the block there. Get rid of that. So what happen is this observer will come along and land underneath the trap door so if i then put a redstone signal i've not got a lever have i no can't test it but if i put a redstone signal into that that will flap the trap door is that right that yeah that's right that will flap the trap door up and that is a uh, a change in the block that's a block update which the observer will notice and it will send it back down the other way again i think that's right I do, I do, I do, I think that is right. So similarly here, if I put a block there, I'm not going to be able to do it at the moment, but if I put a block there, well, I can put the block there. Um, no, I've got to put a block where that observer block is at the moment. If I put that block there, then that will sweep. You know what? Let's test it. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. So, look, look, it goes along. And look, the water's refilling behind it the way it's meant to. That's perfect. That's going on. And it hits the other end. It hits the other end. Uh, one short of where I want it to hit the other end. 
amazing. So I need to take out this two obsidians here and bring this back one. Of course it does, because that's further forwards, you fool. Um, but it does mean that I can then put a block there and put the trap door there like that and put that off, that off, and that off. Right, so I'm going to get this a little bit further forwards with a little bit of redstone. I'm going to use a, uh, an etho clock to time um, a pulse to go into that to flap it up, and then the next pulse will come into this and flap it up, and there'll be long enough time. I'll make it quite a slow one that there's time for the kelp to grow up. A, a decent amount of blocks, not too near the top in case it, the random tick speed causes me problems. Not too near the top, but you know, so I get maybe three or four at least blocks of kelp per swoosh, um, and that will increase the yield. Right, so I'll be back when I've done a little more cleverness. So I'm just going to place that little bit of redstone in there so that when that bolts across, we should get a signal go across to that trap door which should flip up and send the fella across the other way so that will then break any kelp that's grown up through i'm talking to myself as much as i'm talking to you here um and that weights there i put 64 blocks into these hoppers um which gives you a reasonable i think i'm gonna have to put some more in that's just going to come as a case of experimentation just to see what happens but in a sec, that flips across, and it goes back. It's brilliant. And then it flips across again after it's got there, and it goes back again. I don't think that's nearly long enough. I think I am going to have to put some more in. But I worry about that at another time. What I can do is I can just take out that redstone, and that will stop it from moving again, basically, until I'm ready for it. Because I'm going to have to get in there somehow. Well, not somehow. I'm just going to have to knock out one of those... Um, I'm going to have to go in through the top, aren't I? Of course I am. I'll go in through the top. I was going to say I need to knock out one of these things, but that will flood the place and take out my redstone. I don't want to do that. And again, this is all very messy, so I need to do something about tidying up, but I'm not going to worry about that in that episode. Uh, I do need to go to sleep, but what I am going to do here, this is the drop chute, so I'm going to be able to make just a standard kind of auto furnace here with a load of uh, uh, storage so as it can plow through loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of um, kelp get lots of lovely experience and I will love it let's get myself into my house I'm gonna to go to sleep and I'll be back when I have finished the thing okay the system is fully in place and it's been going backwards and forwards it's gone backwards and forwards probably three or four times so far I've got all of the kelp that I have made kind of manually up to now and you'll notice that we're not getting an awful lot of kind of kelp growth we're getting some and you can see the kelp is going up and it's rushing across the top when it gets to the top and it's flowing down the system and it is going into the auto smelter that I've made on the other side there is a little bit of wastage you can see just a few little bits of kelp there do get wasted but that's all right because hopefully it will give me enough kelp to not really care about whether or not there is a little bit of wastage. I've already put nearly three stacks of cobble into this um, etho clock and I wonder whether or not I need to put another stack in just to give it a little bit more growth. But what I've not done yet is put any fuel in the auto smelter. No fuel whatsoever. So if I put that there you can see we've got a full thing of kelp there already and nearly three stacks of kelp there already. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna lob this all in. That's gonna start that fella going. Look, there we go. That's filling up nicely. That's gonna to start to smelt the kelp. And that's gonna to start to fill with dried kelp at the bottom. So hopefully that should bring some more along. You can see it's coming in, into the system. Along it comes as it floats up. I think it's actually worked. Can you believe it? I've literally just made that up as I've gone along. I've actually surprised myself. I was expecting that to be an abject failure and at the end of this video say, well, it was worth a shot, but actually it seems to have been all right.
and I'm going to get out whilst the going is good because <laughs> it's, it's not often I end a, a video on a success. So I'm quite happy about that. That is a kelp farm that is attached to an auto smelter. So the kelp farm gives me lots and lots of uh, dried kelp and also experience when I empty the thing out. That's quite nice. I'm happy. I, I, I'm a little bit lost for words. I've, I've surprised myself. If you have enjoyed that video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great. Oh, look, there he goes again. It'd be great to hear enjoying it. And I will keep on making stuff up like I have today. And also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club. And I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.